My name is Doug Belote from New Orleans, Louisiana. Born and raised in Lafayette and pretty much lived most of my life in New Orleans as a freelance New Orleans drummer. I've been working with um, Joe Sample, a jazz piano player from here in LA, uh, Larry Carlton, uh, Jerry Douglas, Dobro player out of Nashville, Sonny Landreth, and also uh, Derek Trucks. Also a guy, uh, John Cleary, playing in his trio. Doing a lot of TV work in New Orleans for uh, HBO. Did some soundtracks for Treme, the TV show, and also uh, did some stuff for True Blood. That's the gist of the last three years of what I've been doing, other than session work in the New Orleans area. Well, I got, I got into music uh, from my father. He was a, a bass player, session bass player in the South Louisiana area. And uh, as a kid, I would go to recording sessions with him. And uh, he played in church, which is how I started playing music. Uh, when I was, I guess, around 11 or 12 years old. You know, my dad, like I said, he was a full-time musician. And, and I would just go to him to sessions and his gigs when I was, I was just a little child, you know. Fall asleep next to the bass amp during his gigs or a session or whatever. And that's kind of how I got it. It's kind of in the blood. I have, not, I have nine brothers and sisters, and most of us are all musically inclined. Uh, but I just had to do it for a living, you know. <laughs> Being raised in South Louisiana, there was always Mardi Gras parades. Uh, just parades for everything that went on. And as a kid, I just remember being a spectator on the side and hearing the drum section come closer. And it was just the best thing of a, of a child being in a parade when you hear that, when you see that drum section coming or the second line or whatnot. It just lifts your spirits up as a kid. I, I, I just always been a drawn toward that instrument. It's fun to play it. Uh, it's just. I don't know, I just latched on to it like that as a kid. Ever since fifth, fourth or fifth grade, I just, it's been drums ever since. <laughs> you know, my dad being a musician, he was definitely supportive. My mom was very supportive of it. It, it pretty much kept me out of trouble. I, I didn't really play many much sports as a kid. <laughs> You know, I wasn't on the football team or whatever. When I get off of school at 3.30, 4 o'clock, whatever, I go home and start banging on drums till 10 at night. And uh, finally my mom would come in the room about 10 o'clock and open the door and say, Stop! It's enough! I had enough! They had enough! Stop! When I was about 12 years old, I realized that's what I wanted to do. I used to tell my dad as a kid that I wanted to be the drummer on the Johnny Carson show. <laughs> Or uh, you know, or Saturday, or Saturday Night Live. You know, we would always watch late night shows, and he'd make me watch the drummers. He'd make me watch Ed Shaughnessy on Tonight Show, or or uh, Steve Jordan when he was playing with um, Dave Letterman, and uh, you know all those old late night shows. He even used to make me watch Lawrence Welk. <laughs> He's like, see that? That's some music right there. As you know, my dad passed away three years ago. Of, uh, heart attack, but uh, he was very, always, you know, proud, my mom was proud, uh, we just, we would, uh, they were all, he, he, I mean, he would, he would always come to any of my gigs if they were close enough, you know, just to, uh, they would come check it out, but, uh, which, you know, being that they were like that, I can still do this today, you know. After Katrina, I moved to Nashville because the state of New Orleans was just was terrible. So I went, I went, I knew a few people in Nashville, Jeff Coffin, sax player, and, and a session guitarist named Pat Bergeson, and they invited me to come out and hang. So I went to Nashville and uh, started doing sessions, you know, right away actually. And then I got a call from this guitar player friend of mine named uh, Guthrie Trapp. Come audition, bring your drums over and audition for Jerry Douglas. I didn't know who this guy Jerry Douglas was. The whole time I thought I was auditioning for Jerry Reed. 
And uh, <laughs> so I kept saying, hey, let's play Smoking the Bandit. And he's like, they kept laughing, you know, like like I, they thought I was joking, but I was actually serious because I thought it was, you know, Jerry Reed from Smoking the Bandit. After I got the gig, he called Sonny Landry, another slot player with whom I'm working and just recorded a record with, and asked him about me. And Sonny's like, well, yeah, he says he wouldn't play in my band, so maybe you could get him. So I, I was in Nashville for a while, and I did a lot of studio work with uh, did two records with Jerry Douglas. Uh, I did a record with uh, John Oates from Hall and Oates. Uh, also, a uh, bass player Michael Rhodes had got me on a countless sessions over there. And uh, but I just didn't like the town wasn't me, man. So I left and came back to New Orleans, which was a great decision for me. And I started working with Sonny Landreth and John Cleary again because their gigs were really close to me, and closer in my heart of what music should be. And then, you know, when I got home, uh, a bass player friend of mine named Otil Burbridge, plays the Dalton Brothers, had recommended me to Derek Trucks and Susan Tedeschi band. So I've always wanted to work with both of those people, Derek and Susan. And right at the same time, uh, with, with Sonny Landreth had uh, offered me to play at the uh, Eric Clapton two, 2010 Crossroads show. So I'm like, yeah. As soon as that was going to be finished, I was going to go play with Derek Trucks. And we'll start rehearsing with Derek and Susan Tedeschi to start rehearsing for this three-week tour. Well, it just so happens the Allman Brothers had to cancel due to Greg Allman's liver transplant. So Derek's band came and Derek's manager called to man, can you play Clapton's festival with uh, us? We're going to take the place of the Allman Brothers. I was like, well, I'm going to be there playing with Sonny Landry. So, so I got to play at a festival with... Um, backed up Sonny Landreth, Eric Clapton, Derek Chuck, Susan Nadeski. I backed up Los Lobos, uh, Warren Haynes, Johnny Winter. So it's, it's 50,000 people out there. And uh, Eric Clapton's, you know, everybody's tuning up and Eric Clapton turns around to me and goes, count it off. I started like shaking. I'm like, Eric Clapton just told me to count off the song in front of 50,000 people. So it went fine. I was scared. I felt like I was going to lose it at any moment. But it was a great, that was one of the greatest days of my music career because I got to play behind all these legends. What do I get out of playing music? Joy, a lot of joy and happiness. Uh, it is what it is kind of thing. It's like, I can't really explain why I play music. I don't know why, I don't even know why I started. It's something that, uh, I'm a creative person. And it's probably my only outlet to be creative because I'm not an artist. I don't paint. I don't draw. But I try to paint and draw through my drum set, you know, trying to be as musical as possible. And uh, like I said, just where I live in New Orleans, that whole city with the voodoo or whatever they have going on there, it inspires me. The, looking at the Mississippi River inspires me. Everything inspires me. The groove is so thick in New Orleans. It, it's so thick that I think it has something to do with the heat and the the, the dense vegetation, the trees. The, the trees are thicker there. The air's thicker there. The groove's thicker there. People say, "Where's your favorite place?" And I always say, "New Orleans." <laughs> yeah, just I, I hated. I probably sound biased because that's where I'm from, but I'm just speaking truth. <laughs> When I get back from Europe uh, in November, I'm definitely going to be starting on a solo record that's um, uh, one of my good friends that's going to help me produce it and write it, uh, Shane Terrio, amazing guitar player in New Orleans. So he and this other guy, this piano player, one of my, another best friend of mine, Larry Seabirth, they're both helping me write tunes and uh, they're, they're going to be pretty much help me out with this. Shane's going to pretty much be producing it. It's going to be a creative record. It's going to be about who I am. Very South Louisiana based, uh, New Orleans based. I want to just go in and do it in a couple of days. I want to track everything in a couple of days. No longer than two, three days. I want the mistakes and all in the music. Uh, so by April 2012, I, I want to have this record out. Um, 
I'm hopeful. Definitely uh, got my work cut out for me right now. Life goes on, you know. What's the next thing, you know? <laughs>